Hello, welcome back to Tiny Nest. I'm Kiva. And I'm Jake. This is another episode in our building series. Where we show how we install our medicine cabinet and mirrors. One of the last things we needed for the toilet room to get it fully functional is a medicine cabinet. And we were going to buy one new for like 70 or 80 bucks. That's like the cheapest one. And then we found this one at a thrift store for 10 bucks. And it's in pretty good shape, actually. There's shelves here, which we found are reversible, which is good because we want it the other way from the way they were. So that was good. And um, everything about it is in good shape. We were just gonna sand off the finish on the wood trim and possibly restain it or retreat it. And then the other thing is because it's a little bit of an off-white and everything inside the house, like all the walls, including the one that this will be against, is like white white. Um, I'm going to spray paint at least this face, which is really the only face that you're going to see when you come into the room. So with those little touch-ups, I think it's going to be good and great value for just 10 bucks. I cleaned up the mirror and I sanded down all the trim and I think it looks pretty good, so I'm just going over it with the clear coat. After thoroughly cleaning it with soapy water and a rag, I uh, sandwiched the door inside some paper here so that I would just get that one side and then I spray painted it with some white paint. Uh, before putting the mirror back on, just so it's lighter and easier to work with here, we're just figuring out how we're going to position it. I want to get one screw into the stud that's uh, in the wall rather than relying on these uh, thin boards that are, just have the tiny little nails um, to support the thing. So uh, we found that because of the way the framing is, even though the stud is center of the space, the finished walls um, are different. So the stud is actually slightly to the left of center of this in interior space. So that means that we could just mount it on the middle, but then the whole thing would be to the left. Um, so what we want to do is mount it so that um, the mirror is center in the space. And the other thing is that if you, uh, I don't know if you can see in the shot, but the way the hinge is on the thing, um, the mirror is off center of the box of this. So anyway, we figured all that out. And in order to get the, the front facing door with the mirror in the center of the room, uh, we've made marks and just need to line it up basically and go there, but the holes that exist to put screws through are on the far edges. There's none in the center. So I have basically figured out where I need to drill a hole through this metal case to get into that stud. So I'm going to do that. And then once we get that first screw in there, then we'll just pivot it and straighten it out and put some little screws into the boards just to stabilize it, but that one screw in the stud is what will actually hold the thing up. Alright, I pre-drilled a little hole here that lines up with uh, the hole I drilled through this case, and now all I need to do is get them back, uh, lined back up, and get a screw in there, and everything should be centered. Oh, god. oh my god. Now I gotta uh, get some screws in there so that the fact that it's off-center doesn't have it swinging all over the place. Here is the medicine cabinet installed. Have it above the sink here and it's working really well. Got our stuff in there. And like we mentioned in a previous video, we're finding it a little bit awkward to use the sink for things like for me washing my face and for Jake shaving. So thankfully some people commented on that video suggesting that 
we move the medicine cabinet to the back wall behind me just above the toilet box and then just have a mirror above the sink so we'll have sort of better access to use the sink without having to duck down underneath the medicine cabinet here so that's what we're gonna do we were really lucky to find a light colored cabinet with a wood trimmed mirror because it matches the look of our wood trimmed windows on the white walls and it was a perfect size and it was super cheap from that thrift store. So naturally, um, now that we want another mirror and move the cabinet to the back wall, uh, I returned to that thrift store and also checked another thrift store and quickly realized that we're not gonna get that lucky again to find something so, uh, so perfect. Uh, so I checked online and found that not only is this look not that common, uh, it's also like, 60 or 70 bucks was the cheapest mirror I was coming across. And so my DIY instinct kicked in and uh, I found a place in town that will cut mirror. And for about 20 bucks, I'm gonna get, um, you know, a cut of this size. And I've uh, dug into our scraps and figured out how to make uh, a frame here, which I'm in the process of putting together. So I threw this together in haste uh, because I, using scraps, I, I didn't know exactly what size I would be able to make here, and I needed to give the glass place um, a size so that before the end of the day yesterday so that it would be ready today. Uh, so I'm just gonna catch you up on what I've done so far. So this material is, is like this. It's just a one by two pine, really simple. And what I've done is run it through the table saw twice to get sort of a uh, like a staircase situation here, different depths. And what that's going to do is allow me to put a backing uh, that will, once in place, be flush with the back of the trim. So the whole thing just has a flat back. And that backing is just a scrap of our interior paneling material. Uh, and then the second part of the sort of staircase is where the mirror is going to go. And they told me that it'll be five millimeter or uh, three sixteenths, which is exactly what the um, the wall paneling is. So they're both like an equal uh, step down. And I've just been doing some test fitting here, and the uh, it worked out pretty well. The corners are fairly tight, just the way it's sitting here. It's hard to get it bang on, but um, I, I have checked it and I'm pretty happy with it. The one thing I had to do was, uh, even though the angles were okay, the thickness of the material varied a little bit, and I guess you know. Because of an efficiency instinct, I when I when I was cutting it, I did these two pieces that are the same length, one after another, and then the, the next two pieces are the same length, uh, second. Uh, instead of doing like a long piece, a short piece, a long piece, and a short piece, which means that when I come and put these angles together, instead of this material right here having been close to this material on along the length of it. They're actually like, you know, almost at opposite ends of the, the piece. Um, and so that caused a bit of variation. So anyway, I sanded it off, but that's just something that I didn't think of that maybe a tip to share uh, that might help something like this uh, mate together a little bit better. But in general, it's pretty good. And I did uh, a sanding. I put some of this stuff, uh, which we still have kicking around, which is like a clear coat. Um, a simple clear coat that sort of soaks in and I was kind of hoping that it would darken uh, the wood a little bit more. Most of the rest of our trim is fur uh, which has a slightly darker natural color uh, so this might look a little bit different. I might even put this out in the sun for a bit uh, after I'm done with it and see if that will um, sort of give it a bit of an amber color. I don't know how long I have to leave it out there, but I did notice way back when we were framing uh, and raising the walls with our brace, when we had our braces to hold the walls up, when we took those braces off, there was a noticeable um, 
light patch where the braces has had been covering the the stud. Um, so the sun does actually darken darken wood like this um, a noticeable amount. So now what I'm thinking of doing is basically fastening this together, and then I'll do a light sand and another coat of that. But I just want to really sort of make sure that this is going to assemble nicely and that I'm not going to mess anything up. Um, I'm going to use a tiny bit of wood glue, I think. Uh, just, just put a little bit on with my finger, put these together. I'll, I'll have it, you know, upside down like this. And I'm thinking of getting it to where I want it with, the, with a bit of glue, clamping it down, and then firing a uh, finishing nail through uh, basically the, what would be the bottom or the top in, in all cases. So that when you come in, because this would be like the side and you'll probably be able to see that when you enter the bathroom. So I'm gonna try to keep any uh, fasteners, like keep this clear of any fasteners. All right, well that went okay. Um, I, you know, I flipped it over and I can see that the seams look decent. Uh, it's square and I've got some weight on it just to make sure that it's also flat and that you know any of the wood glue that is making contact uh, will set in uh, a way that I want it to. I don't really work with wood glue all that often. Um, one of the things I just did was uh, anywhere there was like a little bit of a gap in one of the seams, I just put some glue on my finger and kind of try to ram it in there. I don't know if that's gonna um, bond really at all <laughs> or very well. If you have any tips about working with wood glue uh, or how to sort of fill in um, you know, any gaps in, in seams like this, I guess I could have used wood filler, but uh, yeah, just, just leave a comment if you have any uh, tips or suggestions. Um, this is obviously not a fine woodworking project, but I'm hoping that it'll uh, look passable when it's done. All right, I just picked up the mirror and uh, laid it in here to make sure it'll fit, and it does, which is nice. I'm gonna pull it out here. I'm just gonna flip it over and see what it looks like from the front. I think it's pretty good. Kind of impressed with myself here. Um, this has dried and it does, I'm being gentle with it, but it seems pretty pretty solid. Like it's, you know, one, one piece. It's not, uh, I can't feel it shifting in any of the corners, just with my light touch. And if I can, you know, avoid putting any pressure on the joints up to the point where I actually uh, secure that wooden panel to the back side, that will kind of be, uh, it's almost like a sh sheathing, like it's, uh, it will prevent any racking in the, in the frame. All right, it's looking pretty good. I've got my frame to where I want it to be in terms of the uh, clear coat that's on it. And everything fits nicely. I've got the mirror lays into the first sort of channel. Gently lower that in. So that's sitting in like that. And then this scrap piece of panel will fit in like that. So I pretty much just need to uh, get, the, get the panel screwed in to the frame. And I was thinking about using staples, but I, um, I found that I have these tiny little screws that I think will be good because they're not so long that they're going to go through the frame uh, and they're small enough that they shouldn't split the wood of the frame. So I'll see about, uh, you know, I'm going to pre-drill a little bit so I can just gently affix these in. And the one other thing I might consider doing here is just put like a couple dabs of wood glue on the back of the glass so that 
uh, when that dries against the board, it'll it'll have some friction to keep the glass from being able to shift inside the frame. Um, I can't imagine needing to take this apart for any reason later, but I definitely am not inclined to like smear a ton of glue all over this so that it becomes one with the the board or the the backing panel here. As you can see, I countersunk the screws. I just used a bigger drill bit to widen the first little bit of the pilot hole so that the whole back is flat. Another thing I was mindful of while putting in the screws was I kept a certain distance away from the corner because that's where my seam is between the the frame pieces and I didn't want to put excess stress on that um, you know because there's just that one nail one little finishing nail in there holding and I didn't want to cause it to tweak and come out of um, alignment and so if I just gingerly flip this over because there's still the glue in there I think it's held pretty firm though uh, but obviously the glue hasn't set yet uh, that's on the back of the glass looks good, doesn't look warped or anything. And it is the thicker, uh, there's three mil and five mil, and the, the guy at the glass slash mirror shop said that uh, obviously the, the thicker mirror is less likely to uh, take any flex and cause a warping of the reflection. Um, and so I'm just looking at this, the seams still look good. There's still, there's a bit of a gap on this one just cause you know, my work wasn't perfect, but I'll, uh, I'll put that one. So I'll, I'll make it so when you come into the bathroom, you see this side, which looks pretty good. And this corner looks good. Everything about this has turned out really well. Actually, this was a lot easier than I anticipated. Um, shouldn't say that until it's totally done. <laughs> but uh, the one thing now is hanging it. And I thought about potentially making little keyhole things, but I'd have to take material out of this uh, frame and I only have a very small width here. So thinking about um, doing a, an inverse keyhole mounting uh, technique where basically I'm gonna put a screw into the back here, probably four screws, and then drill little holes with slots in the wall, basically, where it's gonna hang. And then, and obviously they have to be very precisely uh, spaced and level so that you can basically take the mirror and push those screw heads through the hole and then down a slot and then it'll catch the head. Anyway, I'll take this in because we need to figure out exactly how it's gonna position and if that's gonna work. Um, but it's pretty much just, that's the last step is just mounting this. All right, I've had a look in the toilet room and I'm gonna go ahead with the reverse keyhole hanging. So I have uh, did, did a pilot hole uh, so I wouldn't split the wood and put in a fairly chunky screw there and it's a pan head so that uh, it's you know flat underneath here and it's gonna catch. And I found a scrap of the material that the wall is made of, which is these little, uh, little tongue and groove boards and I drilled in and figured out which bits I needed uh, to make this sort of keyhole shape. And I purposely left this blowout on the back because that's what it's gonna be. I won't be able to reach in behind there, obviously. And so it's a little, this is kind of upside down, but um, this is up. This is gonna be the top of the mirror. And so I'm gonna represent this as, and also, you know, I'm not gonna move this. <laughs> I'm not gonna slide this down, I'm gonna slide this on. But hopefully you can understand what I'm getting at here. So what's gonna happen is I'm gonna push that screw through the hole. <laughs> and then I will be pushing the mirror down 
and it will slide into that slot like that. And now that is not going anywhere because the, the screw head is now holding against the back side of the board. So it might be, like this is pretty tight, which I want it to be, but I'm gonna have to make a little template. I'm gonna maybe use some cardboard to make a template of exactly where all these screws are. There's four of them, obviously. So the holes that I drill like this into the wall will have to be bang on exactly where those are. And then also my little keyholes, which I'm kind of doing freehand by basically putting a, the smaller bit through there. Where's my drill? I'm basically just passing the smaller drill bit through the hole and then pushing down to make that. So I need to be uh, accurate, have a steady hand, make it in the same direction and not wander off to the side because all four of those screws all need to move in the same direction to slide and lock into place. So this is gonna be a bit tricky, but I think the result, if I can make it work, will be good because it'll be nice and flush. And uh, if it's if it's, there's enough friction, you won't be able to bump the uh, the mirror off of, you know, what it's had the way it's hanging is not easily bumped off. So I did make a cardboard template, punch little holes that correspond to the hanging screws on the back of the mirror. And I also made sure that the orientation was correct, like I wasn't gonna mirror it. <laughs> no pun intended. Um, and end up with like the left and the right mixed up for, for this uh, template, basically. So have that accounted for, made a mark in the middle. It's actually an old pencil mark from when we were mounting the medicine cabinet, which is center, so that was already there. And then there's the old screw holes for the medicine cabinet, which um, i am basically picked a height that is such that once once it goes in and it goes down the keyhole, it'll just barely cover these holes because we do want it as low as we can go because you know we want to be able to lean down and still see ourselves in the mirror. So I've got the pencil marks there. The only issue, which I didn't think of, which I should have thought about before is that these are great here but these ones land basically right on a seam of the board and I think you know I, I could move the screws on the mirror but I'm gonna try drilling this I think hang on let me think about this you know what I could move those screws do you think that's better Maybe. All right, I decided to move the screws on the mirror, which meant a trip back to the garage and sort of held up the process. But something that we've learned over the course of building is that it's always better to take the time to make things move more smoothly than to try to plow ahead because you often end up struggling that way. Like trying to drill through this seam would have probably ended up being a struggle. So anyway, I moved it up by an inch and a half and I transferred the marks here, and these ones are the same. So now I'm gonna go ahead and drill the main hole and then do the keyholes and then we'll see if it fits. Wish me luck. <laughs> All right, now before I drill the keyholes, I am going to see if these line up. Just make sure that we're on track here. And they do not. Nothing lines up, literally nothing. All right, so I did anticipate this being challenging trying to line up the, the holes, especially because I'm trying to make them fairly, like a fairly tight fit. So um, I basically used this as a reference and then had to uh, open up the holes in slightly different directions to get everything lined up, which is going to present a bit of a challenge when doing the keyholes, but at least like I didn't widen or adjust this hole at all. This one is very minor. So bottom ones were the, the biggest 
um, amount of drilling needed. So I should be able to make a pretty strong keyhole up here, and then I'll just see what I can do down here, and just kind of keep kind of playing with it. But it's right now it's not keyhole in; it's just kind of pushed in. So I'm going to pop it out and get the keyholes drilled, and hopefully get to a point where I feel confident with uh, how it's secured. All right, I <laughs> drilled the keyholes, and uh, relative to the adjustments I had to make, and now I'm just gonna hope for the best. Let's see if I can't get it slotted down in a way that feels half decent. I can hear some kind of wedging noises. You know, part of me wants to just say, leave it. Because, like, the more times you yeah. screw or unscrew something or wedge, make, you know, if you compress the wood yeah, and it's a nice friction fit, but then you pull it off and then you try to put it back on, it's not as tight. So, like, because... Like, I can't pull that off. I think I'm gonna leave it. It looks Does good. It looks straight. I don't wanna push it too hard. It did move down though, so it definitely went into the keyhole. Okay, cool. It looks straight. I think we're gonna call that a win. So, with that mirror in place, now we just need to remount the medicine cabinet to get all our stuff back in here. And also, you know, we're gonna have another mirror, so we're gonna. You know, one of the things, I, I cut my own hair, and uh, I usually have to hold up a little handheld mirror just to see what I'm doing on the back. So this will be interesting to see if I can actually use this double mirror thing, because you'll be able to see, I'm expecting that we'll be able to see the back of our heads. It, and it might actually be like an infinite, uh, you know what I mean? Right. Anyway, we'll find out. Might be weird, but we're going to see. We instantly noticed a difference in space just having the mirror here. Last night I was able to wash my face and not hit my head on the cabinet and Jake shaved in here as well and found it much easier. And for the cabinet, uh, in order to have the door open towards the back wall, we flipped it upside down and reversed the shelf so we were able to put our stuff back the same way we had it. And we also double checked that when we sat down on the toilet, that our head wouldn't be hitting the cabinet unless you are leaning way back, but that feels unnatural anyways. I did not end up trying to darken the frame at all, so it is a bit lighter than the rest of the trim, but the medicine cabinet's trim was always darker, and we never noticed that, so it's just a little bit of variation. And in terms of the infinite mirror uh, effect, if I hold the camera right in front of my face, even if I turn my head and move around in different directions, like I can't, I can't see the back of my head. But if I open the medicine cabinet, ta-da! I can see the back of my head. So obviously, if these were two fixed mirrors, perfectly, you know, direct opposite each other, this wouldn't work. But having that hinged mirror makes it possible. This is another episode in our building series where we show how we install our medicine cabinet. <laughs> what is that? It's like, and this is the reality of living in a tiny house while you work in it. I can hardly move. Thanks for watching. Subscribe if you like what we're doing here and turn on email notifications so you never miss a video. You can also find extra resources in the description below. We spend countless hours making these videos for YouTube. So if you appreciate our work, take three minutes to watch the video in the top left tile to learn some ways that you can support us for free. We'd really appreciate it.